I feel like when we go on this journey, we, we are so, we are also accustomed to looking to the world for uh, signposts and symbols and reflections. And I think we have a bit of a trace of that ego thinking where the ego had put the world as a projection just so we would get lost and caught up into these images. And so much of the authentic spiritual journey is really loosening our mind from attachment to outcomes, to those specific forms. And it's very upsetting and irritating and annoying when those forms come out in a different way than we had anticipated. So you might say that that's what the authentic spiritual journey is about, is just becoming so trusting, so intuitive, so internally guided and directed, that you loosen from attachment and form outcomes. So you can let all things be exactly as they are, so you can just watch the world and behold the world without feeling that your emotions are on a roller coaster ride based on good outcomes and bad outcomes. But that takes a lot of, of mind training. That takes a lot of, of practice. We were having dinner last night and I, I shared that uh, on a recent uh, live television broadcast to uh, a lot of Latin American countries and Spanish-speaking countries, uh, one of the questions was about discipline and why do we so associate discipline uh, with a, a negative experience? Why do we have a, a negative connotation with the word discipline? Because if we're honest, there's all kinds of things in this world that require discipline. To pretty much learn and master any skill, it takes a certain amount of discipline. When we think of education, there's a discipline required to giving ourselves over to the coursework and, and practicing and reading and studying and remembering and being tested. There's just lots of areas where discipline is required. And so I don't think it should be too surprising that to wake up from a dream of separation that there's some discipline required, which I just call mind training, and that it will require some repetition some practice, some dedication, some devotion, and I would say initially actually some effort where is, it's almost like if you were uh, swimming downstream and at some point you were told you have to go upstream like the salmon, uh, it would take some effort, uh, particularly because it seems like swimming upstream is going against the current. And if we've been so addicted to ego patterns, and ego distractions and ego temptations, then to turn away from the ego and to turn toward the spirit can seem to require some effort. And this is only necessary while we still believe that there is something to resist. When we get past the stage of resistance, when we get past the stage of, of, of feeling like we're fighting against something, or battling against something, then then obviously the resistance is gone. We, we actually can see it was never there at all. I studied, uh, I was in university for 10 years and when I came into A Course in Miracles, I actually was quite surprised to find that Jesus has a, a positive interpretation of resistance. Because you don't usually hear Resistance talked about in positive terms. It's always negative terms. But Jesus says that, the, that resistance is the ego's interpretation of progress and growth. So whenever you feel in resistance, just think of those words from Jesus. Progress and growth. Progress and growth are always occurring. And the ego interprets that in a negative way. It interprets itself being undone in a negative way. It wants to exist. It wants to have its own existence separate from the universe. Like a uh, wave telling the ocean, 
wants to exist independently of the ocean, like a ripple telling the ocean, or like a sunbeam telling the sun, I want to exist apart from the sun. It's, it's really quite arrogant. Sometimes people have described the ego as like a, a mouse roaring at the universe. <laughs> How is that one? And so, what we see is that we have a golden opportunity now, as we give ourselves over to this mind training, to actually have a profound change of mind, a profound change of heart that changes everything, it brings us back into a natural state of happiness and joy. And that's our life. Uh, that. That's what we dedicate our life every second of every day to just that. And it's been quite a journey.